Following in Darwin's path, biologist Chris Schneider and his colleagues have come to South America, to a remote region of Ecuador near the base of the Andes Mountains. For biologists today, the lowland rainforest and the nearby Andes Mountains are laboratories for exploring Darwin's ideas. Over the next several days, Schneider's team will track down rats and frogs, bats, birds, and lizards, through day and night, both here in the rainforest and high up in the mountains. By comparing the two groups of animals, they hope to better understand how changing environments might trigger the evolution of new species. You just can't help but be awestruck by the fact that there are so many different kinds of things here. There are 12 species of primates. There are 550 species of birds that have been identified here. There are uh, 200 species of frogs right here in this little area. Wow, that's great. The spicelemus. Why is there such diversity here? Ornithologist Tom Smith wants to compare the size of birds' beaks from the rainforest with those he hopes to find in the mountains. Even subtle differences may offer clues about how and why new species arise. How different will the highland birds prove to be? is 10. Different enough to be considered new species? Schneider and Smith move from the steamy lowlands to the windswept Andean peaks. When the Andes were uplifted, it created a whole variety of new habitats. The animals that were in the lowland rainforest had an enormous opportunity to colonize these new habitats, and they did so. The real question is whether adaptation to these new environments can lead to the formation of new species. The traditional view of how new species come into existence is that uh, populations become isolated geographically. And once they do that, then they're free to diverge. They're free to, to take their own evolutionary pathways. Uh, what we're finding really challenges that, that uh, traditional view. That is, we don't think geographic isolation is very important. We're finding that populations can adapt to different selective pressures over very short geographic distances and without geographic isolation. And that that local adaptation uh, could be critically important in generating new species. You can imagine a small-billed hummingbird living in cloud forests some thousand meters downslope from us. And if those individuals were to expand their range up into this habitat, where perhaps flowers are much longer, you could expect that individuals with slightly longer bills might survive better. And in fact, there are many examples in hummingbirds where we know that small changes in bill length can make important differences in how that bird extracts nectar and how well it survives. We're seeing that changes in the environment can be very important in changing the characteristics of those animals as they move between environments. And we believe very strongly that, uh, in many cases anyway, that this can be very important in the progression to new species.